Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. In this video, we're looking at relays. We're going to look at adding a relay to a door intercom. We're going to look at why you need a relay and the interface between a relay and an access control device, mainly the ATT10. In this video, I'm using the VHLR relay from CDVI. I'm using the door intercom, the 901 or the VRK1 from Bell Systems. And I'm using the ACT10 standalone keypad. Let's look at a um, typical audio intercom. We're looking at a five-way intercom here. In particular, we're looking at the Bell intercom. Um, it doesn't really matter which one it is, but it could be the 901, the VRK1, the BL1. With the CS 106s, the CS 109s, they, they all give the same sort of output, and it could be an intercom from Videx or Aphone, um, Firmax, BPT, Comelit, any of the uh, any of the brands we do, they all in principle give the same output, and that's on the intercom itself. You have the generalized wiring here, but they all they, they all have the same thing in common, and that is an output here for the lock release, and you can see on most of them it applies a voltage so in previous videos we've discussed that when you press this uh, the lock button on your phone it sends negative to the lock release and engages the lock release so that's the problem if you've got um, an intercom which is powered off ac and you have a keypad which is 12 to 24 volts dc there's an incompatibility there which we've, we've just spoke about so that's where you would that's where the relay would come in and simply on the relay you have the terminals coil pos neg input whichever relay you're using in our case on the vhlr it just says um, voltage 12 volts dc uh, 12 volts input sorry and that's where these two wires will come in here because when you have when you make these connections here this one goes straight to positive and uh, as i've just said there this one applies negative so let's look at the VHLR. It's a bit difficult to bring a drawing up, a technical drawing up for it. So let's use one on our website. So on our website, you have your inputs, as I've just spoke about, positive and negative. And you can see there, it's not polarity sensors, it's positive or negative, positive or negative. And with this VHLR, it's 12 to, 20 foot, 12 to 28 volts AC or DC. So brilliant for applications on intercoms which are mainly 12 volts dc you can use it on fire alarm systems which would be 24 volts dc you can use it on cctv systems which are 24 volts ac so you have many um, input voltages there to work with within our industry um, it is a double pole so it's two pole so that means this relay here has two outputs two separate outputs typically on access control you'd only have the one output but why would you need two outputs well one output could be for the interface to to a keypad to a reader to an access control system the other might be to a buzzer so you get you have a reassurance tone or maybe an led um, so you have a reassurance tone and some sort of illumination to say the lock is unlocked so that's why you'd have a double pole relay there so having a closer look at the um the contacts the outputs you have normally closed common and normally open that's for relay one. Relay two is a mirror, normally closed, common, normally open. So common is the feed. That's what you would feed into it. Normally closed, it's a normally closed circuit. The circuit's always closed. So if you put common into there, if you put a feed into there, without ha having any input here, if you put a feed into there, it will come out of normally closed. So if you're directly connecting to a magnet, for instance, which needs constant power to work, you would feed your positive or your negative into common, come out of normally closed. So normally the relay is closed. When you apply power to it, that relay will go open. It will break the circuit, but so it will unlock the magnet. If on the other hand, you're going to tell a keypad to unlock or a reader a proximity reader or some sort of standalone device or even a network control and packs and net two or vanderbilt 
um, ACT um, 1520, uh, the microguards from TDSA, a WIMPAC, MPA controller, whichever. If you go to the exit button input, those inputs are open, going closed. So the circuit's always open, and when you close the circuit, that makes the um, exit timer start. So if you were to do that, you would have a circuit which is normally open, and oh, the circuit's normally open. So you'd feed your signal, your negative or positive, into common and then you would come back out of normally open so say we look at our most popular example which is the ACT 10 on the wiring for the ACT 10 the push button is 0 and PB that's two ways 0 and PB if you short together 0 and PB it will unlock the keypad on the exit timer so those are your two ways 0 which would go into common because that's a feed PB is the push button and that goes into normally open. So when you apply power to the relay through the input here, it will close this circuit here, common and normally open. It will close that circuit and in turn tell the keypad to, to unlock. As I've mentioned, the ACT10 keypad, let's stick with that um, as our, our guide. The, um, the ACT10 keypad combined with the VRK1 is our most popular integration. We get the most phone calls about that in tech support. And in some cases, their clients have got a, an ACT10 already installed and we're, at, we're gonna add an intercom to that. In other cases, it's vice versa. The intercom's already on the wall and they're gonna add uh, an ACT10 to that and in some cases it's just a new installation where they've got an, they're going to have an ACT10 with a VRK1 or a 901 or a BL1 and they want them to work together so how do we do we go about doing that so we've already covered on the wiring diagram for the VRK1 we've covered that it's the lock output to the coil of the relay but how do we integrate that to work with the ACT10 for instance so here we have the um, typical layout of an ACT10. Power coming in. Outputs for your locking devices. Sounders if you're having them. Um, door contacts. Tamper input for the alarm. Tamper output for the alarm, sorry. And finally, exit button. So this is the, um, the button that you press that tells this relay to unlock this door. So when you press that, it makes a circuit. It's normally open input and that will tell the lock to unlock, whether it's a lock release, a mag lock, it could be a gate controller, anything really that needs to be code controlled. So on the keypad, that will be an input. And you can see here, for the exit button, zero volt goes to one side of the exit button, and push button goes to the other side of the exit button, leaving you with two wires to connect. On your uh, relay, this will be an open circuit, so one side would be fed, zero volts, that would be fed into common of the relay. And it will come back out of normally open. And that will go to the push button input of this keypad. So when you press the button on the phone, that will tell the relay to unlock, which in turn will tell the keypad to unlock the door. Installers rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and projects teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.